Hey everybody, welcome back to Wing Wednesdays. I'm Tucker, and today we're gonna to talk to you about how to pick a wing board size for an inflatable wing board. Uh, so there's a lot of confusion out there. You hear a lot of talk on leaders, uh, and generally that's specifically referring to hard boards, boards made of foam, fiberglass, hard boards, not board that you're gonna inflate and pack up for travel, or if you live in an apartment or something like that. Um, those need to be sized differently. Uh, and the primary reason for that is because they have more thickness and the shape of those rails and the whole rocker line and the taper of everything uh, is a bit different for those inflatable boards because of the way they need to make them. So how do you actually size up a wing board uh, in the inflatable construction versus a hardboard? Um, pretty simple actually. I would say do your best to ignore the leaderage. Um, there's gonna be plenty of float in a wing board because most of them are five inches or more thick. Uh, that thickness is continued through the entire length of the board. There's no taper really to speak of. And the board's uh, rails don't have any cutaways or kicktails or anything like that. It's just a big full fat rail. So you're gonna get a ton of volume packed into the same length and width that you would have uh, of, of a hard board. And I would say generally that's about 25 to 30% more uh, for an inflatable board. Now, if you have the float, why might you want a bigger board? Well, as a beginner, you might need a bit more length and width to the board. Number one for stability, but number two for planability. You know, if you do not have your technique perfected or maybe riding a little lighter winds, you're not gonna take off immediately. So that ability of the board to, to remain stable so you could stand on it, but also to allow the board to plane out on top of the water and build speed before liftoff on a board that's too narrow or too short, uh, especially at a beginner level, is, is just going to be too difficult and you won't be able to lift off. So when in doubt, go to the next size up, but really what you wanna pay attention to is your length and your width of the board, because that's really what's gonna matter with regard to planability and stability. Uh, so the best way to do that, if you kind of know, you know what dimensions you like in a hardboard, pretty much just transfer that over to a wing board. It might be 20 or 30% more volume. Don't worry about that. Worry about the planing ability, uh, basically the surface of the bottom of the board. If you don't already know uh, what size wing board you like in a hard board, um, easiest way to do that is to size yourself in a hard board and kind of transfer over those dimensions roughly to a similar dimension uh, inflatable board. So if I'm 90 liters, you know, as a new rider, I'm probably gonna want something between 110 and 125 liters, give or take a few liters, depending on uh, how optimistic I am or how hard I wanna work at it versus how easy I want it to be, or maybe if I don't have a lot of experience in board sports or wind sports or foil sports, go a little bigger, um, and transfer that over to an inflatable board. So let's say, okay, I want 110 liters, it's five foot 10 by 29 inches wide, that's a nice rough, kind of average size for a board like that, going to an inflatable wing board that's roughly five foot 10 by you know 28, 29 inches wide is a good way to go. And that might be 130 or 140 liters um, you know, in, in most inflatable boards. Don't worry about that. Extra float's not gonna hurt you. Um, in fact, uh, it, it can help you in a lot of ways. So don't worry about that. In terms of the swing weight on an inflatable board, you know, it's less consequential than on a hard board because the front end of the board is so lightweight. You know, there's not a lot going on up there. There's not a lot of support. You know, it's just kind of air and some materials. So going a little bigger isn't really gonna hurt you a lot of times. Just give you a bit more versatility and ease of use. So hopefully that helps you guys a little bit, gets you uh, in the right size wing board. Uh, as an advanced rider, I also say, you know, take caution when you're buying an inflatable board. You might you know, be really good and, and easy to knee start a board that's like four foot 10 um, and, and 70 liters or something like that. Um, but when you transfer that four foot 10 into an inflatable board with more volume, you gotta remember you're gonna have a higher center of gravity. You're gonna be more at the surface of the water where you're gonna get thrown around a little bit more by chop and waves. Um, so also take that into account as an advanced rider that a board can be a lot more corky with more volume and thickness, even if it does have that same dimension. Uh, so you might need to go a little less volume uh, if you want it to sink more and then kind of deal with that instability as much as you can or, or just size up a little bit 
uh, for a bit more stability and uh, and realize that it's really not going to affect your riding all that much because the front of end, the front end of those wing boards that are inflatable are, are so incredibly light. Um, so hopefully it helps you guys out. If you guys have any horror stories or suggestions, uh, anything you've learned along the way on inflatable boards and how to size them, uh, maybe tell us your favorite inflatable board. Put that in the comments section below. We'd love to hear from you. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up, share it with a friend, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.